You found yourself on another episode of Locked on Bulls. In today's episode, we'll be talking about Billy Donovan still not figuring out who's the starting power forward 24 hours before the game. Right. We'll, also, we'll also talk about Kobe White not getting a rookie extension as that deadline passed at 6 p.m. yesterday. We'll get into all that, plus fact or fiction with these rumored uh, city edition jerseys. All that and more on today's Locked on Bulls. <laughs> Ugly jersey. You are Locked On Bulls, your daily podcast on the Chicago Bulls, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for tuning in to Locked On Bulls. Remember, the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. That's Pat, the designer, host, and creator of the Windy City Breeze. I'm Hayes, who's creator of Chicago Bulls and Chicago Bears Central. Nonetheless, Pat, we're we're a little over 24 hours away from the Bulls taking the court for the first time against the Miami Heat to start the season. And apparently, while Javante Green's injury has been cleared, he's going to be good to go, which a hit pointer we already said it wasn't going to probably take long. But Billy Donovan still does not know who's going to be the starting power forward against the Miami Heat. Is he just playing some chess here with Eric Spolster? What's going on here, brother? Um, I, I mean, I, I would think so, right? Like, you... That's one of those things where you know, right? You want to breed that competition. Um, I don't know if the Bulls have another practice before this game, maybe. So maybe you want to see, right, like who's going to go the hardest in practice here. But I think Billy Donovan kind of knows the guy he wants to roll with. I think the bigger story out of this is that, right, like we that's the first confirmation that we got this season that Javante Green's absolutely your backup power forward at a minimum. Like, that was the biggest thing out of that that I heard. Like, the fact that he doesn't know. Like, again, right, We, me and you both have talked about it on this show um, and on our own platforms. Like, starter is cool, but if Patrick Williams comes off the bench and gives us 17 points, are we upset? <laughs> if Patrick Williams comes off the bench and plays 28 minutes and he turns into a heck of a, a better score for the Chicago Bulls because he's able to score or he's able to have the ball in his hands more with Alex Caruso and Kobe White and guys like that. Like, are we going to be upset? Like, oh, now we, he's a failed pick. No, we're going to be like, he took a step this season and we're getting to see it more. So I'm not tripping on um, him being a starter or not. And I think Billy Donovan probably knows the guy he's going to go with. But I thought it was interesting, right? Like, that's the first time to me, at least that I can remember, that we've heard that Javante is a guaranteed power forward essentially saying marco simonovic you will not see the floor i mean my thing is is where have you been if you if that's surprising to you like who did you think was going to be the backup power forward what do we think this is go- where, where do we think this was going well i mean i i i thought you would get him in there right but like you confirmed him at that position so basically like you're gonna go from p will right like Javante. i thought yeah. i thought you might see like a rotation where you come in with a small ball lineup or something like that but i think like the confirmation of it is like no he's your backup or your starter, this is what we're rolling with. So for me, I thought that that was interesting to see. I mean, I just, I guess, I guess I just thought it was a foregone conclusion. I mean, looking at this roster, I didn't know who else would play backup power forward. I mean, I guess you could have thought DJ maybe, D, yeah, maybe DJJ, but we know like he hasn't had nearly the preseason Javante has, and he kind of fell out of the lineup even when he did get back healthy last season. So yeah. I just, I kind of always assumed it was going to be Javante and P will there um, back up. You guys, you you know, and we we kind of disagreed on that in the off season on where Javante was going to find his Javante minutes. Was so gonna play. exactly, so eighty five thousand percent, hundred percent from the field in preseason. Now all of a sudden he's uh, he's back in the lineup. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, I've always thought that Javante was going to have a place in the lineup, and it just makes sense on this team for him to be more of a, of a four. That's where they used him last season. It makes sense. They really didn't do anything else to bring in anybody, in my opinion, that could have played back up four. Now, had we signed Danilo, that would have been a different story. Now, that's what it would have been interesting to see how the minutes would have shook out had we did get Danilo Gallinari, because then, like, it's like, all right, where's Javante fitting into that point? Um but, you know, everything worked out the way that it's supposed to. Um, as far as not knowing who the starting power forward is yet, though, the way that I look at it is this. Um, it's gonna. This is going to be an all-season thing. I think we're going to see uh, – we may see three games of Patrick Williams starting in a row. Then maybe he has kind of a down half or whatever, and we mix it up, throw Javante in there for, for the next three to five games. Mix it up again. Now, what does that do for the continuity that you bet on? I don't know if that happens, but I do think that we see 
some type of rotation, whether it's maybe matchup base, whether it's maybe if they do they do see in a game that, hey, maybe if we bring Patrick Williams off the bench, his ability to facilitate and have the ball in his hands is going to be needed a little bit more than having him in the starting lineup. I just think we're going to see more fluctuation over the course of the season now. I don't know if that's going to be the best thing for the team overall, but that's what I expect as of right now. I think – Right, like I think as long as they're playing the same position, it, it'll probably be okay. I think like when you start to see issues very much like with Kobe White last season, is when you've got right, like if we had Javante Green, he's the power forward, okay. Now he's the point guard, okay, now he's the shooting guard, okay. Now you know, like kind of the same thing with Patrick Williams, right? Like you want to give these guys a role for them to step into and be consistent on. Um, and I think that's probably the the biggest thing that the Bulls want to do this season, right? Especially with with guys like Io, with guys like Kobe, right? For you to see the most out of them, you wanted them to have some consistency in that role. Now, injuries are going to play a major part into that, right? Whether that if, if guys are healthy or not, that's going to play a big part into that. But I mean, like, listen, if <laughs> we talked about Lonzo yesterday, man, if all goes well with Lonzo, like this Bulls team is going to be ridiculously deep. Like, it's going to be deeper than I think Muggs really paid attention to because, like, most people didn't even think Dragic was going to be getting looks. Most people thought Drummond was going to be a 10 to 15 minutes a game guy just coming in as your backup center playing that Tony Bradley role. Bro, these mugs going to get some run this season, especially with this schedule. Yeah, it's going to it's gonna be – like, I've been saying that, like, in a, in a game – it's coming even more true when you see the way that the bench played, at least in preseason. And if that sticks, like Billy Donovan can go 10 to 11 deep every single night. Yeah. And so as long as everyone's playing well, if we have that true bench bomb. Like I think last year we threw the bench bomb because they were fun to watch at times. But the, the true epitome of a bench mob in Chicago to me is that when you have a bench that comes in and not only maintains a lead, but increases that lead in times. Yeah. And if, you, if we have that, a true bench mob this season, Bro, that's just that that completely and, and and no hyperbole here. That completely changes the outlook of this team. And then then the style yep. of play that they had off the bench too. Like the ball movement, I think, was even better with the bench unit than what it was with the starters at times. And it was more consistent. When you have Gorn and Caruso out there and Kobe White seeming like he improved his passing with with Drummond who can pass and whoever comes in outside of that, whether it's Terry, whether it's uh, Derek Jones Jr., they get to benefit like. This bench unit could be fun, bro. Fun oh, yeah. and and potent. Oh yeah, and I think right like the idea of uh Patrick Williams on this bench probably doesn't sit well with most Bulls fans, right? Cuz I think if you think about a benching role, you think of a demotion. Mm -hmm. But if we get to see the P will that we got to see at the end of the game, with him coming off of the bench, or if we got to see the P will of last season where he got the opportunity to have the ball in his hand, with him coming off of the bench, you could be talking about the Bulls going from one of the mid-level benches in the NBA that's just a deep team and you can rotate a lot of guys in and out mm -hmm. to one of the best benches in the NBA because you've got a ton of defenders on that bench. You've got, hopefully, right, at a minimum, three really good offensive players for you. On that bench, hopefully Kobe White's able to take that step if Patrick Williams is. And then Dragic, I think Dragic is just going to be a dude that's just <laughs> – he's he's going to be like um, – uh, um, I don't want to say great value to Rosen, but a guy that just like can go out there and just play his game. And he's just going to be like, why – is he knocking down shots? <laughs> like, like, like he he's 39 years old. Like, he's 36, but still, right? Like, yeah. it's like, bro, he's just moving. So, like, I think there's an opportunity for this bench to be something that we look at completely the opposite of last year where you just had so many guys in the starting lineup that you basically – I mean, we didn't get any scoring from our bench last year. <laughs> Oh no, bro! It was it was it was tough. There were games, bro, where like literally we would have less than double digits in scoring co total from the bench, and I was just like, and we would win the game. It's like this ain't gonna keep lasting, fam. This is I I still remember to this day we beat the Rockets, and I went and I did, and I did a live stream afterwards, and I was like, listen, y'all, yeah, the Bulls got this win. But if they keep playing this way, we're going to have a lot of losses back to back. And people are like, I'm confused. Did we win or not, Hayes? And then we went on like a five-game losing streak. I was like, see, I told you. Bro, the <laughs> see, I told production you. is so important. You cannot yeah. overstate it enough because it allows you – like if we're going to be any sort of team that goes deep in the playoffs, 
you have to have that bench production because if you don't, your starters are overworked. This is true, and especially when you look at how tough the bull season is about to be as well. Um, it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be important for that. It's gonna to, be, uh, it's gonna yeah, it's going to, yeah, it's going to get ugly. But uh, next up, we're going to talk about Kobe White not getting the rookie extension. But first. Before we get into that, I got to talk to you guys about LinkedIn. Uh, these days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash LockedOnNBA. That's linkedin.com slash LockedOnNBA to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right, Pat. You always come with some weird sound effects, bro. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But by the way, y'all, thanks for making Locked On your first listen today. Now for your second listen, uh, check out Game to Game. Every moment, every top performance, every result, Locked On Game to Game covers every game from across the Eastern Conference with local analysis that only Locked On can deliver. Follow Game to Game on Locked On, uh, available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. There you go. There you go. See, that's, that's how you do it professionally. Nonetheless, <laughs> so uh, the deadline to extend rookies um, uh, on the rookie uh, scale of contract extension was 6 p.m. yesterday. That passed. Kobe White, as expected, did not get a rookie level extension. There are some other notable rookies that did not. His teammate Cam Johnson, for example, did not get that. P.J. Washington, who I would love to have on this Bulls team, did not get uh, it either. Uh, Thibault did some people who did Kevin Porter Jr. got his um, but what do you what do you make of this as far as Kobe White not getting a rookie level extension show me something show me something that's what it comes down to show me something that's it um, show me why I'm wrong make me pay for being wrong about you because you haven't shown me anything to this point you haven't done enough for me to feel good about giving you the money. make me pay for not making a decision to get you at a discount. Damn. That's a bar, bro. That's literally a bar. Make me pay. Uh, and that's what Co – listen. And the thing is, is that Kobe's future with this Chicago Bulls team is not written in stone yet as much as some uh, Bulls fans will have you, have you believe. If Kobe yeah. comes out and performs, even with Io's uh, extension also coming up, I think the Bulls may sign Kobe. Who's probably still with the outlook to move him, but at least that way it's in it's in control. Because I just said, as I've said before, I don't see this team paying over ninety, almost a hundred million dollars yeah. in guards if they extend both Kobe and Io Desumu this summer. Um, but at the end of the day, Kobe owns his own future. Like if Kobe comes out and performs and can be consistent, can be the weapon that we need off the bench, it changes everything. If he's just going to be an up and down scorer, guess what? I'm sorry. I hate to say it. I love Kobe White. One of my first videos to blow up and me being a creator on this platform over on Central was me saying the Bulls would be crazy to trade Kobe White yeah. at, before the season started last season. And I still see the potential in him. He's still a young guy, everything. But this team is, is trying to compete. And if you're an up and down streaky shooter – as I was about to say, hey, I can find those for less money than than what we can extend you for. I can find those at this We've point. We've had them. Yeah. <laughs> that's, so. that's been the main thing that's been a part of this team. Um, yeah, no, 100%. I'm, I'm with you on that. I, I think, you know, I mean, even in all honesty, right, like I look at that in a situation of not only can I find those guys, but if I move on from you, I'll go get one of the guys that, also didn't get re-upped and see if that puts me in the right direction, right? Like I'd rather take a chance with a young guy that I don't know. And I, I don't want the bulls to just give up on Kobe. I like that Billy Donovan and AK have an understanding of what Kobe white's been through in his career. I like that they have an understanding of what um, um, Kobe white injury wise, no training mm -hmm. camp. This is his first training camp. Let's see if he can take a step, but it comes down to right. Like at, at a certain point it's play on the floor and I'm sorry. Like I, I get, the mindset of you have to let these young guys develop and Kobe White's still ridiculously young too. Like, yeah. what is he? 22. 22. 22. Like he's ridiculously young. Yeah. So I get it. Right. But like there comes a point where it's put up or shut up and you got to at least make me look at you and be like, I shut up. You know what I'm saying? So like, that's the one, that's all I want to see from Kobe White this year. Prove every same thing. Patrick Williams, Kobe White, 
Prove everybody wrong. Prove all the doubters wrong. Prove AK wrong. Prove Billy Donovan wrong. Prove, right? Like, just prove these mugs wrong. Because if you do that, then guess what? Your paper comes with it. Yeah, and job security comes with it as well. Like, Kobe's coming into the season still with the role in the team. Billy Donovan has made it clear in the way that he's talked about it. Kobe White is still going to be a key part off the Chicago Bulls bench. But guess what? The caveat is for now. Because if you come in and you don't perform, as we've already talked about, there's there are dogs on this bench that they are they are out to eat every minute they get a chance to get out there. David yeah. Terry, Javante Green, like they're 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 uh, dogs on this roster. There are veterans on this roster as well who, if nothing else, can be consistent. So it, in Kobe White and going to what is for the most part a prove it year, not just if whether he's going to stay with the Bulls or not. This is a prove it season for for Kobe White for in the league's eyes. Yeah. If Kobe's still inconsistent this year, he may very well still be with the Bulls just because. Hey, listen, that six seven million dollars from the Bulls, if you ain't uh, performing, is going to look a lot better than from a team that is going to give you three and a half to four. Right, and in that situation, you're more willing to pay that. Yeah. So right, like it, it's it's one of those. It it just it just really it it's it all comes down to Kobe and what he how well continuity also pay, pays off for him. I yeah. said it over on Central. The two players, single players that can benefit the most off continuity is one, Nikola Vucevic, who seems like he's going to, and it's Kobe White coming in full offseason, knowing exactly what his role is. There's no more. Are you the starting point guard? Or are you back up? Two, there's none of that. You're the guard off the bench. You're the scorer off the bench. You know your role. If you come in and you can do those things and execute and show, then no, I am a better passer now. No, I am going to also give more effort on defense. So that way, on times where my uh, shot isn't falling, Coach, you can still keep me on the floor because I tell you what, if Kobe shot, if he has two back-to-back games where he's going 0 for 7, guess what? Dalen Terry needs to be out there then. We we know his yeah. defense. Yeah. So it's up to Kobe to, to do what needs to be done, and I, I think he will. I think Kobe White is going to perform this season to, to the point where we're going to stop talking about if or when Kobe's going to get paid and talk about how the Bulls are going to uh, move that into a Laurie-type sign-in trade in the offseason. And, and that's, that's really be. that's really a big thing, right? Because you also got to think about right, like I I we we never really got back to this, but uh, they didn't get a contract worked out with Vooch in the uh, in training camp like they said they were going to. I didn't what, even think about that. When uh, when we paying him, or are we paying him, or what are we paying him? Right, like they talked about wanting to pay him. They talked about him wanting Vooch to be here for the future. Mm. We didn't work that contract out yet. So are they planning on working this deal out? Are they planning on getting something done here? If they are, now you might be in a situation where you got to pick or choose, dog. And I'm going to be honest with you. For Kobe White, it's big. Like you said, it's bigger than just the Chicago Bulls. Like, you got to play well because at the end of the day, they're probably going to choose Ayo DeSumo over you. And if they choose Ayo DeSumo over you and they decide to pay Nikola Vucevic, then you're probably going to be on the trade block. And for you to be on the trade block, you're going to want to get the most money you can in a sign and trade deal. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess we'll see, man. It's, it's, it, it, what happens with Kobe White season is going to be interesting because either way, the bulls are in a position to, to win. Right. Yeah. Cause if, if he does succeed, then you consider signing a player that is, that point, a score off your bench, or you're getting a sign and trade, you're probably going to be able to get a low first round pick or something back for him in the team that right. wants to work out a sign and trade. If he does not perform, all right, you you already have players in the wings. You free up that money. That that situation's gone. Um, or you can still, if you believe in his potential, just you don't have to pay him enough for it. You can still re-sign him at that point if he has a terrible season. And still bring him in. There's a lot of different ways that this can go for Kobe and the Chicago Bulls, but I think the Chicago Bulls are in a position to where um, they can get it worked out either way. Yeah, no, 100%. I, I think the Bulls are in a really good position here um, yeah. just with young talent on this team. Because even with that, right, like we're talking about Dalen Terry. Dalen Terry's just getting it cracking, and we like, yo, he might really be something for this Bulls team. Again, he's in the wings. AK might pick his guy over you. <laughs> what what was the point of the laugh there, brother? 
I'm just saying. That was that was bro. <laughs> they love, bro. That, that was like the claw from Inspector Gadget, bro. That was the that was diabolical, I'm bro. Just That's saying, what that was. Bro, like he might pick his guy <laughs> over you. Get it together. <laughs> we'll see what happens with Kobe, man. I'm uh, so before we get out of this segment, going to the last one. Odds that Kobe White is a Chicago Bull by opening night next season. What's the percentage you're putting on that? That's tough. Um, Give me 50%. I'm going to say even, right? Because it's really a flip of the coin thing. Like if Kobe, because the thing is, right, if Kobe's cooking, why not bring him back? And and there are quite like this is also hopefully that Vooch has a a bounce back season mm-hmm. and is able to do better right so I'm like why not bring him back but if if Kobe ain't cooking you never know so we'll see I'm putting it at forty five percent you gonna you gonna do the uh, prices right you did well no well right? I was uh, no I, I'm Just I was me. <laughs> I was coming in there to say that anyway I was gonna originally say forty percent but I just think I'm looking at it like. I just, it really depends on what the market looks like because Kobe yeah. White, if he has another inconsistent season and you can get him cheaper and he's still at that point 23 years old, I think that you might go that down. Di- I don't, it, bro, I really well, I don't think, know. I think, I think that's the thing, right? It's all yeah. based on his play because you can, like, if Kobe White takes a step, mm-hmm. do you know how easy it is to sell top bench score on our team? Um, but if you start him, you'll be able to get more out of him because he's figured out his role in the NBA That's and he's true. 23. Like now you're possibly talking about like Kobe White being a real value piece for some teams that are trying to jump start what they're doing. Like this is all long shot. If it was a fifth, we'd all be drunk stuff. But like I I just I look at it as if Kobe takes a step, there's going to be such a market for him because of his age still. Yeah. He's coming in younger than some rookies are. Yeah, this is true. Um, and just a FYI on the Vooch thing. So it looks like veterans with two years left in their contract and they can sign an extension up until to the end of business today. Vooch, and he's in the last year of a veteran extension of a veteran deal, yeah. they can re-sign him to an extension any point in the season. So even though I mean, nothing's I, been announced, I, I knew that, but I just yeah. we had heard that report that he was going to be it was going to be it, done. We talked, yeah, in training camp. In so training camp, I wonder if there's. I, I wonder if I, the, the, if. Somebody came to the table. If, were they not offering Vooch as much money? Bro, as- I, I told y'all. Uh-huh. They, came, they came to the table and was like, we got the, let, Let's not report on that. We Let's not report on that because we don't know that well, for sure. Well, it ain't sure. reporting. That's, that's yeah, me speculating. Yeah, yeah. But, but I ain't going to lie to you. Like That would be the thing that makes sense where Vooch is like, no, nah, I'm going to cook this season. <laughs> hold, hold your money. Well, like yeah, yeah. You're like I, and listen, I'm coming back. But listen, I uh, <laughs> just watch me work real quick though. Watch me work. Um, 100%. 100%. Hey, shout out to Vucci. If he gets it done, he gets it done. All right, bro. Before shout we out go, my brother Vucci. It, Vucci, bro, that was the first live call of yours I ever watched. And you said Vucci when gang. Said that, Vucci. that that thing killed me, bro. <laughs> I was like, did this man just say Vucci gang? <laughs> wow. But all right, bro. Last segment of the day, man. You uh. Tag me, and this was the first time I saw it. The uh, rumored leaked Chicago Bulls City Edition uh, jerseys. We got pictures of those that got released, bro. I started off with this saying that they're not that bad. And you know how, like, things can grow on you over yep. the course when you see them more? It uh-huh. was the exact opposite. It got uglier every time I saw it. <laughs> like, when I initially saw it, I'm like, you know what? That's not that bad. It's not terrible. But then I look at it in a little bit more detail, bro. Like, it's just... The thing, I think the Bulls have set such a precedent for their City Edition jerseys being so good. You had the white and blue, the blue ones, the ones that were the Art Deco style, the black black and yellow, right? Is that what it was? Yeah. Um, those joints were beautiful. The uh, last season's were really nice. This just seems like a... I don't, it just doesn't have any type of, like, the city jerseys have embodied the city of Chicago in some type of way. These don't do that at all to me, bro. These just seem like a, a alternate from the 1990s. 
Bro, these jerseys, I don't, I don't care what nobody say. We look like Chicago Heat in that mug. We look like we. They do not look like the Heat jerseys. Bro, they look bro. exactly like the Heat jerseys. No, they LeBron don't, and them bro. used to wear, bro. Yes. Bro, the Heat jerseys, the jerseys trim on the sides went all the way up. Yeah. The numbers were, the number were also offset. Hey, These ones are, are centered down below, bro. Come if you on. want to talk about the specifics of it, I, right, I'm talking about your color scheme. I'm talking, they not even bright red. Like you going with like a burgundy red, bro. Come on, dog. Like we I don't can, know. The picture does look like it was taken with a 2006 Android, though. So it may not be accurate. It looked, it looked like it, it did look like that jersey. I will say this: it did look like that jersey. Remember the jersey that uh, Stacy King and uh, Adam that they were flaming old through? boy on yeah. it. <laughs> it did, did look like he might be the 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 purchaser of that jersey. I will say that there was no um, uh, Motorola patch on there, so there wasn't a uh, their their endorsement on there, right? Um, so we're just gonna bring this up real quick. Right for those that are listening on you on a podcast version, we're on the, go to the YouTube. We're bringing oh, up a picture of it. What's the bottom right? What is that logo there? That bottom right next to the Chicago flag. The Chicago flag. I don't know what that is. That's bro. the one thing that made me think that these jerseys might be fake because I don't yeah. know what that logo. And is. it's definitely not a Motorola jersey. Yeah. I mean, symbol either. Um, but I like the like the detail. Like you can only see when you look closely at the picture in the jersey in the white that is not just flat out white. There's some like design there. I do like that. Um, I like the red that they, yeah, it's not bright red. If it did, I, I kind of like the darker red in some cases, but to okay, me, bro, fuck yourself back into it. no, I'm not, I'm not like, <laughs> I'll say this, bro. I'm not, if this is the city of this in Jersey, I'm not, I'm not buying this one. Hey, hey, put the picture back up though. Put the picture back up. This is the question. Is that an NBA Christmas sock behind it? Like that might be like, is this an a Mitchell and Ness? Listen, listen, <laughs> there is. You see the Mitchell and Ness there? The see the socks? <laughs> Come on, fam. Is this, no, bro, this is not a Ross. It's not a Ross. Oh, come on, bro. But this no, can't I, be it, man. I, I, here's the thing. The reason I'll say that, right, we've never seen this jersey before. That's DeMar DeRozan. So it would have had to be made current. We've never seen that jersey before, right? It's almost like they're trying to do a variation of 90s Bulls pinstripes just with a little the, touch on the Just side. do that. Like the white with the that. red pinstripes. Please bring that back. Bro, Please. that. You want to talk about a jersey that I would buy the day that they're available? If they bring bro. back the white with the pinstripes, bro, the pinstripes get me. Come on, bro. When they when they brought back the black with the pinstripes, did you see the excitement when they like? Bro. It's simple how like little pinstripes bring so much joy to Chicago Bulls bro. fans' hearts. Remind bro. me of the nineties, bro. Don't bring Man. back them baggy shiny jerseys that the Bulls was wearing in the two thousands either, bro. Oh, know. bro, those Let's were see. awful. Those were god off. I had a Lou Aldang jersey like that. I was like, hey, man, why this look like tinfoil? Um, but no, bro, like, that's the only thing that makes me think these jerseys might be real, bro. Like, honestly, because, like, why would a DeMar DeRozan jersey be in an older style or, or a random style of jersey, I guess, right? That's that's made by Nike. Man, oh, somebody took that picture in a Nike store in Taiwan, bro. I don't know. Like... <laughs> bro, I don't know, bro. <laughs> Oh man, this is gonna be it, bro. We and you know what's funny is that it this leaks the same day that teams have started leaking their yeah, their yeah. their city edition jerseys because Boston's. I'm not a Boston Celtics Boston. fan. Nice. That Boston out. joint, I don't that even usually clean. like green like that. I'm getting a, I'm getting one of those. Bro. That mug clean, bro. I ain't gonna lie. To <laughs> that, that, listen, Charlotte, so far, Charlotte's is always weird because it's just like, um, didn't they leak theirs today too? I think I saw Charlotte's today, right? I think Charlotte so. leaked theirs, and I remember seeing it and just being like, "Ah, it just looks like another Charlotte jersey." Uh, <laughs> but I mean, like, I, no, it's, the Boston Celtics is nasty. That mug is clean. Um, I yeah. feel like I feel like this is the if this is the Bulls City Edition jersey, this is the worst one they've ever done. Even the yeah. Chicago lettering irritates my soul. Like you couldn't have gone with a better font on that. Like I feel like you you type you put in Times New Roman and called it a day. Bro, that's uh, that's B Boss new new you know give what it, saying, whatever. Bro? Like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> hey, we couldn't a, get a cool font. Adobe fonts installed. Looking right. at like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you y'all shopped on the font for that one. It <laughs> 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 was on thefont.com. You came for oh, me. Oh man, Much that's funny, bro. <laughs> 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 but let us know down below uh what do you guys feel about the uh the rumored city edition jerseys and hopefully once they are confirmed you know we'll go a little bit harder if they those are confirmed confirmed is it i'll be going a little bit harder the next time out is all i can say 
If they and it, I think here's the other thing. If they're not confirmed, who made that jersey? We need a holler at you. <laughs> if you made that jersey, we need a holler at you. We may have a job for you. We may have a job for you. We may have a job for you. Oh man, if you guys are listening on the podcast side as well, man, check out the Twitter. We got the pictures tweeted out over on the Locked On Bulls Twitter. So tune in with that as well. All right, man. But that is it from us for today. Pat, go ahead and send us home, brother. Hey, man. Follow me on everything at Path the Designer. Follow us both on everything at Locked On Bulls, where you can see the jerseys at. Absolutely. You can follow me at CEO Hayes at CEO H A I Z E. And thank you for making Locked On Bulls your first listen every day. Now, for your second listen, go and check on Locked On NBA. The NBA season is here, and our local NBA experts and insiders have you covered on and off the court all season long. All the biggest stories around the NBA every Monday through Friday in less than 30 minutes. Available on YouTube, Odyssey, and wherever you get your podcasts. For Pat the Designer, I'm Hayes. This is Locked On Bulls. We out, y'all. Peace. Peace.